Hello everyone, welcome to episode 18 of New Vita Let's Talk. Today is actually a big episode, you know, we got the team members, the core of this uh, New Vita unit right here. You yeah, know? we got the people who ran and also the people who supported us. Yeah. So, give a brief intro, I, I, you know, for those who don't know you guys. What's up guys, my name is Dave, um, I work on the podcast production team and some of the editing portions. What's good guys, my name is Jesse, I help you guys well on the editing team as well, and anything else I can do to support yeah facts okay do you want to talk about the fucking mar- half marathon right now let's uh get out of the way first off let's give a shout out to the people who supported us i think that's the number one thing right um thank you to everyone who showed up for us to like actually do this who believed in us yeah because it was uh, david biggest- davies jeff espinoza brian espinoza those guys were clutch bro like they yeah. actually mm-hmm. i was i was running the and they actually would run with us for like a little bit you know what i mean Real squirt much. Gatorade in the mouth and shit yeah. yeah like give a shout out to the people who even like actually our core friends who was like just showed up. They were there, and they're like, Sergio wow. Laura out here coming from St. Thomas Hill supporting us. That was Brandon, huge. Brandon, Claudia. Yeah, 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 of course. Like, thank you guys. And you know what? Uh, biggest thing is when you got a team. Teamwork makes the dream work. 100%. So let's dive in the pod. Yeah. Well, just uh, one last note on that. Also, thank you to anyone that did donate there. It's very much appreciated. Um, all those went to were submitted to the Heart and Stroke Foundation today at 5 p.m. Thank you. Do we know how much was yeah. raised? Uh, five hundred twenty-five dollars. So yeah, that's good. It's not bad, that's actually. Huge. It's our it's our first fundraiser. Facts. Let's double it next time. It's our next yeah, goal. Let's do let's it. Let's double it. I'm with it. Right. Yo, let's get into it though. Like like in the sense of like um, how do you guys how do you guys feel about that? Dave, you first. <laughs> uh, dead. Honestly, um, I'm not used to waking up that early. I don't have a morning routine. I'm not gonna lie. When it comes to like uh being up before a certain time. So that was a huge adjustment that I've been trying to make the last week. And then, um, yeah, just in the run in general, like my knees are shot. Like <laughs> it was a long time, you know, but we pushed through, like got some great times, like everyone finished. And that was the goal today was showing up and finishing. Yeah. yeah honestly, like the, the line, it's not a, mar- it's not a, sp- it's a marathon, not a sprint really like ingrained in my mind today. Where it's like, it's not worried, but like there, man, there is a lot of people I've seen where I admired them, how fast they ran. But at the end of the day, it's like the completion is, I think, the biggest goal out of what we did today. Yeah. It's like we saw a goal, we work for it, we put the time in, and we finish it. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm just pr- honestly, you're proud of the, everyone, the team, you know, like like each of us who who ran it and everything, because like it was it was one of those things where it's like. You kind of like think about it from afar and you're like, yo, what the fuck? 21 kilometers is a fucking lot. Like, I'm never going to run that, you know? And then so, when yeah, you yeah. actually put your mind to it, it's kind of like, like, it's not that yeah. like crazy. And none, none of us are runners either. Like, none of us are runners. Yeah. yeah. First marathon That's for huge. all of us. Like, yeah, yeah trust crazy. Me. Was there any point where you guys had like, had to like dig deep where you feel like, yo, okay, I'm getting a little bit tired yeah. now, maybe? Oh, yeah. 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 For me, I, yo, I'll, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. For, well, I was going to say, for me personally, like, I just had a lot of like the people who were out here supporting me or you. And like, or even you, just in my vo- in my head, just saying like, don't stop, don't stop. The main don't goal stop. is don't stop moving your legs and you can actually complete this. And nice. that's kind of, I think the biggest factor was you saw yourself if you were the one, like there are people who started the run really fast, but then you slowly pass them. But the reason you passed them is because you didn't stop. And I think that was like the, I think what I learned the most is as long as you don't stop, you will pass people eventually in your life. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say like like around like 10k, it was perfect timing. I know Jesse's gonna respect this because it's my boy, but like I put like some prayers on like on my playlist, so it was going from like banger, 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 and then like a nice prayer for like 25 minutes, bro. Oh. Now I hit at 10 kilometers, so I was like, yo, like like I'm blessed right now, like I'm need, good. Because those, those those moments you gotta dig deep. It's all I'm mental. It's all I've mental. Done before you know, like this is was that supercharged? Yeah. Because like I'm asking. It for was, like, bro. For someone who, I guess isn't so spiritual so like yeah it was like like i i the the rose usually, usually lasts like 20 minutes and like um i don't know bro it was something about it like like just getting deep into to that like per state where like i forgot i was running for 20 minutes and you guys know in like kilometers that's like almost four kilometers that kind of go by you know that's what i mean lot. and i was just like just in that deep like state like yo let's just keep on pushing you know like, thank you for that and it, it was big it was big but definitely had a, yeah there was a there was a moment where we had to push bro for sure has to bro what about you david what do you think oh yeah definitely at um like for me it was the first like shattering moment for me was uh i told you this earlier when we hit 5k like yeah. same pace same movement everything and then like i was like yo i have to dial it back or else like uh, who knows if this race is going to get finished uh that was where like the first big moment was like okay like yes i have to slow down but like 
am not stopping. Like, it's that's not the end of the race, you know? And, like, yeah. I had to convince myself that, like, yeah, there is going to be a finish line there. Um, that And then around, like, 12 kilometers as well, 12, 13 kilometers too was another, like, tough moment. But, mm. yeah, same thing like you guys said. Like, it's mentality, right? Like, just but the like we talked before the race, um, the only thing to have in mind was to finish, right? That was and, big. And Your motivational like, speech before the race actually pumped me up, bro. I'm yeah. gonna ask you: Did you guys think you weren't gonna finish? Mm. Like realistically, like did you have a moment where you're like, ah, I might not finish this? Okay, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's just that, you- like physically, like somehow, like I felt like that was one of my best runs. So like honestly, like like so after no. 10, 11 k, like I was like, I'm actually gonna do this. Yeah. And like that was a good feeling internally, you know what I mean? Like I'm mean, gonna do, do this, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like yeah. so that's yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah pers- like you. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I had some self doubt throughout the week, but like when it came to like when we were there this morning, we showed up. I was like, yeah, like it's gonna be done no matter what. Like I, I've been through more. I've like with my workouts and stuff. Like I, I can handle this sort of thing. The, but the week was kind of tough leading up, for sure. Yeah, no, honestly, I never knew I like I never thought I wouldn't finish because especially like y'all finished before and like when I saw y'all, I was like I knew it was like perfect. They're done. I'm that much close. That much closer. But when you wrapped it up, bro, I was so fucking. Yeah, and it was good to I finish so strong. Excited. Like that was, yeah. I think, my biggest focus, especially the last one. I like, I did, there were a couple walks because, like, I did rolling loud the week before, so my ankle was shot. Yeah. Mm. So like, I could feel it, but like, I knew my last, like, the, my full lap, which is what, like, two point two five. I knew I had to run it, and mostly for myself, because I had to say, like, we, like, we didn't start this walking it. So like. How are you gonna end it walking in? Yeah, yo, I want to get Jesse. I know you didn't run the half marathon, but I know like you've been in those f- times where shit is serious with physically, like you're mm-hmm. a football player, athlete. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, what 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 kind of takes you through those moments? I feel like I mean, I'll definitely say like those moments are moments you never forget for your life, and those are the moments that kind of, even though they might seem subtle, it might not seem big in the grand scheme of things, that definitely shape your personality, bro. Yeah. Like when you meet perseverance, when you I forgot which is a coach, man. There's a coach, I think he coached at, at Miami U that talks about like conditioning will, will turn a man into, he says the B word, like a B word. Like that's like, yeah. honestly, if you if you were to like run hard, bro, condition hard, 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 and you had a choice to either give up, like even if there's a million dollars in front of you and you're gassed, a lot of people will still give up. Even that it's right in front of you, unless, they, unless the person has the more mental fortitude to push by. So when you think of like it might not seem big in the grand scheme of things, but just in terms of like your body, the mental side of it is so is so huge. The human body is, is is fascinating. It's honestly fascinating, and it's extremely strong. But it can only go as far as your mind can take it. So you guys experience that today. So there's moments where you feel like yo, my I might hit a wall. You're like, damn, yo, how am I gonna do this? But guess what? Your left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, and just keep going, and you make it through. And you look back like yo, damn, before I didn't think I can do it, but. Yeah, you feel me? It's weird because like if you f- if you focus a little bit on like on like for example like your ankle that's tweaking a little bit. If you focus on that too yeah. much, you're all of a sudden like not gonna want to run. You know what I mean? So it's literally like your brain controls everything. Bro. It's crazy how you, bro. Your body strong. will give up on you before your brain does. Hundred percent, it will. Yeah. As long as you tell yourself keep going, like we we did it during training. Remember, ankles are shooting. We're like just keep going, just keep going. Yeah. No facts. It's fucked, bro. It yeah, your body will keep going, man. If you like. It's the uh, way you said it. Said it. I was like, maybe it's not true, but that is true. Like, if if you have the mental fortitude and your your body will let you know. Like, if your body's shot, your body like is not going to. Yo, David Goggins proved that. Bro. Yeah, this guy's yeah. running. Well, what is he doing again? A hundred hours. He's like ultra marathons, like hundred mile races. It's <laughs> insane, bro. And that, like, hundred mile yeah. races. Yeah. That's a crazy. Un- under twenty four hours, I think too. Like, I would have insane. to get that fact check, but yeah. 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 Crazy part is to remember we're Canadian, so our metric system is different. We do kilometers versus miles. Miles are like. Like double whatever we do, so it's like well, majority of the world does kilometers and not miles, so yeah, yeah. it's just Americans that are kind <laughs> yeah. of twisted, if you were yeah. to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But they're the crazy ones, apparently, now they always gotta be the outliers, though. Yeah, we know how that goes. <laughs> 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 Trump 2024. You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can get into that if you really want. I'm here. I mean, we could, we could, but like, I think there's a lot of opinions, a lot of. Um, I mean, politics is part of it. Like, you, you can't say Facts. you're on one side and not accept the other side. Like, that's just that just shows you're ignorant. You know. I, so, well, I think I think politics in general should be an understanding. It should never be it exactly. Should be, it should never be polarizing. We believe in one thing. It's like everybody's got. A point to prove right which is fine you know what the problem is though the problem is when the center keeps on going one way mm. where it's no longer the center yeah 
Don't get me started, but no, no, it's it's. <laughs> I'm right, a bit to mental fortitude, though. <laughs> so no, but like, it's we were the okay. This I don't mean to cut you off, but like our age, especially our specific our generation, is so important because we seen like everything. we're a mix. Yes, man, we seen bro, the '90s, '90s kids. Which if you're like okay, '98, '90s. 97, 98, I'll cut you off. Like, you got to see, like, literally the, from internet just really being installed, instantly, like, coming in, and the change of it, social media, phones, like, we remember from BlackBerry, man, from BlackBerry to the first iPhone, the first iPod, switching, I still remember, bro, I still remember walking to the bus stop when I was younger, with a CD player, Walkman. Like, yeah, oh, I, I had a Walkman, I had, I had a great MP3 Walkman. Player, a little MP3 bro, with player, a with a USB. No, put a CD. And now I can have a Bluetooth, two Bluetooth headphones in on my, my ears iPhone. Mm-hmm. on my like, iPhone. The yeah. 90 oh, yeah. babies are kind of like the, the top of that wave. You know, oh, like, yeah. like, you know, when there's a, a wave coming, we're yeah. surfing it. We're surfing technology. Like we're with it. We're born at the same time. It's yeah. going, you know what we, I mean? We get, Exponential we, growth too. We were yeah. lucky where we got to eat the same food as like, I guess, like the tech babies. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. We got to digest the exact same thing they did. Difference is they digested it to the point where they're like the old liars they know everything it's like how do you do this oh da, 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 da. it'll be a you, you know what i think it is i think the 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 we were in a perfect kind of like generation where like we had to have values installed in us before technology mm-hmm. got big mm-hmm. and then we grew with technology as opposed to like some people are just being born into technology no facts. like we had we were that perfect like mid hybrid we're the ones you know? who know morals right remember even too like the biggest line is uh, like uh, this is what i know just from like talking to my cousin who was born in 2000 after you were born in the 2000s, you don't have common sense. It's a, big, <laughs> it's a big fact that they would actually say it. A lot of people actually bring it up. It's like, it's a thing. It's like, it's one thing that was installed in us, but like... We Very got, disrespectful. Hey, yeah, I, I was in that hey, you know what? Couple, you know what? Bring in the comments. But like, the whole idea is this. It's like... That's our future, bro. We, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yeah. Is, this, is the future bright, though? I don't think so. No, 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 yeah. No, I, I get so. like what you mean when it says like I iPad kids and stuff like that. Like, especially at such young and influential way, like ages, where you have access to like some some parents don't filter at all. Some parents do filter a nice. little. Some are only educational. But like, at the end of the day, like even you've seen how we've transitioned with social media and like the guys that like we follow and watch, Nelk Boys, like or mm-hmm. like I watch a lot of Mr. Olympia, a lot of um, mm-hmm. like Bradley Martin, like fitness stuff, right? Kenny Koo. Uh, yeah, like well, yeah, you know, and uh, <laughs> they get them the the impact on like how your daily habits are or like like goals and stuff that you want to achieve and set. The the culture of the internet now is memes, trolling, like they're like you guys said with the whole morals, like it's just a culture of almost like disrespect in a sense but like them not understanding it because like no one should be taking them serious and at the end of the day like nothing that you say matters when it does like a lot of stuff can have impact mm. and i think that's where the disconnect is on like the disrespect aspect of it facts and like i feel like a lot of time like people like they'll say shit on like the internet but if it was ever in your face bro I'm glad they're, you, they're I'm not glad you, speaking yeah. one word man that's it i listen to a lot of podcasts and that's why they call them internet warriors it's like a lot of people <laughs> will never say what they say on the internet because like if you even think about it put someone to a challenge they're probably not going to meet the challenge and i think that's what like an interaction could be right if you put you get someone to push you to the edge where you actually have to defend yourself some people get scared some people just don't know how to interact and it's also maybe that didn't come up from a lifestyle that actually allows that to happen right or even know how to defend yourself so i think that's nice. like slowly as we get into this like older and older it's like it's very time with the elders or even the idea of like but the people don't respect elders anymore. exactly right no. and that's, they really don't like not teach, like back in the day and back teach, in the day they were like the queen elizabeth you know? and they teach us everything and i think that's why like respect your elders is such a like it's so pivotal you should never disrespect your elder it's 100 percent. no i i i feel strong about those two things is your words and and respecting your elders so i'll start with your words i feel like i've i've been personally practicing that for the past year since we've been in ottawa and it's been making myself more aware like people see it through different things you know some people see it through the lens of um words of meaning some people see your words actually you know actually help lay down the lines of your life so if you say words they actually help but it manifests things and i think there's a tie of two things like from the faith i believe in but i also just believe like as a man to you know, if you say something, you have to back it up. And so, our, like you said, our generation is a little bit different. So we kind of grew up on both sides. Whereas to now, you're, you, can, you can say whatever you want to say. Call, say racial slurs when someone kills you on Call of Duty. 
because you know you're not gonna say no. It's, I, I, it's I laugh true. too. No, it's yeah. funny. It's I, true though. Listen, I laugh too every now and then. But like these kids are literally that's the right wine in the brain. I can do this. I can do this. You know. But like you said, in person, that's not real life. Different energy. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna go and do that to the in the streets of Atlanta, Chicago, New York, certain places in Toronto too, and LA. say it to the person. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna happen. I remember, LA, I remember yeah. you were one of the like the people who were crucial in like in like me in like my life in regards to like how i spoke my words you know what i mean because like what you said like a lot of times like you know what i mean like you said words are important bro yeah every every word you speak like like you know like it has value like like even like i can't do this or yeah. or like um you, like, so, like what made you focus on that yeah bro just reading bro i would say like my parents so my parents are pastors and and so like i always want my, my parents it's like I, i've i've met people of faith who like they live the faith but it's like it's not really you know, it's not an important thing to them. Yeah. So I was to my mom and dad, like, you're not, you guys are, you guys, I, don't say, I call them angels, but you guys are not, or like, I don't say they're realistic, like in terms of what I see mm-hmm. represented in my life. Like you guys actually, my parents are people who dedicated their life to the community, dedicated their life to the faith, like genuinely, like, like the representation of that was proper, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so it, I have no excuse not to be a genuine person myself, not to be a caring person myself, you know what I'm saying? Because my representation with that in my household was genuine like it wasn't just talk my dad actually bro i'm telling you there'd be moments in my life where i remember like we'll be almost home someone will call them and call my dad I'm like yo i left my purse at church pastor can you go get it for me and we're almost home bro 30 minute drive go back get yeah. it for... casually oh pastor can you come help me with this i'm locked out or pass it my dad just whatever you do even take my dad to my dad to me volunteer take shift at mcdonald's at the street, the bill was just, you know, casual, man. Yeah. I didn't know these things, you know, but I, I, I remember just, like, keeping them back in my mind. Yeah. And so, like, okay, like, maybe as I got older, you know, even still with that, because of that, like, I didn't, I took it seriously, you know, I, I'm baptized, I took it seriously, but I still wanted to understand more. So, I went to college, I lived my life, you feel me? I did what I had to do, I experienced yeah. things. And I'm like, you know, at a certain point, I'm like, you know, I want to, especially when COVID hit, I started before then, I started reading, I'll say, 2000 and like around 2018 i started just reading the bible a little bit here and there listen to different people talk jordan peter just saying listen to different people just listen jordan to different Peterson. people in my mind you know what i'm saying like just started switching it up every now and then and playing football so like like i said just experiencing life and just seeing like what's real and what's not and we've you know everyone can experience this i mean at a certain age you can experience like you can say for a fact as you live on this earth you can see there's a facade of things you can tell there's a reality and there's, there's things that are just not realistic and those things are not realistic because they're things that you see on social media. And the things that are realistic is like the hard work. You, you got to pay for things. You got to do things. You have bills. You have lives. So you have the you know, relationships. You have families. You have mothers. You have fathers. You have brothers. You have sisters. Things you got to take. Those are things that are important. And we see the values of things that are pushed and then things that are not pushed. You know what I'm saying? So That's probably the biggest one, though. People, it's huge. people sleep on, on hard work. You know, Bro, like on crazy. social media, it's so, it's so portrayed. Like, you know, like. I have this, I have this. It's so easy. But like, but like, no, man. Like, like if you really want to be My successful, God. it's like hard work. Yeah. Like, yeah, really money, hard. The, like, I think the biggest issue is money and minutes. Like yeah. how, like, that's very profound in our generation, how we grew up. You can make money in minutes. Do this, do this. Mm-hmm. How true is it? After us living it, we tried it. We did, uh, what is I Am Academy. You know? Yeah. Oh my God. Like, but yeah, yeah. You know, like, no. Right? And, like, you know what? Bleep, <laughs> bleep that bro. out, Brandon. Bleep the, we ain't advertising. Yo, exactly. Yeah. Cut yeah. that out, yeah. but like straight up. <laughs> that is like, yo, yeah. that. We got Kawad, we had no idea. Exactly. But like, you <laughs> know what I mean? It's but it's yeah. all but it taught us, so. Yeah, I mean, yo, money in minutes, it can happen, it's, but yo, it's bullshit. It's put yeah. your work in, show up. Yeah. Like, I think biggest thing, show up. You show up. You're fr- like the people you work with show up yeah. because they see it's a se- no, sweat equity you know it's, it's like, it's like what, the only way That's that you can get it. something like good in the future is if you sacrifice, sacrifice something in the present well. and, and, and like that's something you learn as you get older like there's no quick scheme like yeah sure like you can make like you can do a nice little flip on like AMC make $20,000 okay once you waste the $20,000 what's up and that's what you know, and that's what and that's why like our auto experience was important I didn't even cut you off just because it's what's real what's not bro what are you Whoa. doing? It's you can be a billionaire, man. You can be a billionaire, bro. Facts. All your billions you can pass it down to your kid, and your kid is not like you. Doesn't agree with anything you agree with, bro. And you die. And okay, you get this one. We've seen those cases. Of that girl, that that lady who died, she hated her family. She left her money to the dog. Like, bro, like, bro, that was the geez, geez, It was a lot, right? What it was like millions, was, wasn't it? Not? It's mindset, right? It's like, real, your kids are not gonna think. They, even to our kids are not gonna struggle how we struggled, right? Nah, and that's the thing. That. Like, we have to realize this. Like, they they'll never struggle how we did, yeah. and like. I think also that's why we do struggle. Yeah. We struggle so they, they don't have to. Yeah. 
But that's the crazy thing is like is like from our struggles we have to learn. Like let's be honest, that's the hardest Facts. part. You know, like, I agree. You know what I mean? To 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 really learn that lesson, bro. Like you know what I mean? It's so easy to just repeat. But like but like you said, if we really want to teach like you know our children and our future generation, like like as men, we all know like shit has to change at some yeah, point. Mm-hmm. What was, you know what I mean? So I guess we can ask each other this. Like, what was your especially now? Like, what we're kind of hitting like thirty thirty is close. What was kind of your Thirty, yeah, I was like thirty. I was like eighty, thirty. I was like holy fuck. I was like just touch thirty, thirty. Just touch twenty seven or thirty. Think about this, Bobby. Thirty, thirty. Yeah, we're twenty six, thirty, thirty. Oh, I thought you said thirty. The year thirty, thirty. I was like, puta, Bobby. That really thirty, thirty. Because you guys got to remember this. Like, oh, thirty, thirty. Okay, we're twenty seven, right? We're at this point even. It's coming up though. Yeah, you're right. We're closer to fifty than we are zero. Right. So it's like especially now we're like we're establishing a base. Like, <laughs> sorry, fuck you guys laughing. <laughs> no, you're speaking real. Continue, man. Continue, bro. So Go like, ahead. And so my concept of the idea of dirty thirty is this: it's like, okay, do you believe you're at what you thought a thirty year old would be at? Okay, you fuck start with this. No. So fuck David, no. David, bro, David. I'm telling you, since like the age of like sixteen, seventeen, I've been thinking about like, and I, keyword thinking, haven't been executing, but thinking about like yeah. having things planned out where I'm going to be, how my income's going to be, what I'm going to achieve, and and how I'm going to retire in my 30s. Be Like, this was, like, all mapped out. Like, I have, and I don't know. Like, it's not anywhere near where I thought. So, fuck no. Like, so, the hiccups happen, right? I think oh, it's, yeah. it, it's one thing we don't realize. Like, we could plan everything out, but there are hiccups. So, you, do you think you would be at the same place you thought what a 30-year-old would be? Yeah, I mean, I'm 27, so, like, like, do I think I'm going to be where I'm at when I'm 30? Like, what I thought? Yeah, I think I'm going to be there. But, like, but like I feel like we have a misconception of age. Like, bro, 30 is so fucking young. Like, I can I can literally, like, God forbid, obviously, but, like, like start from zero at 30 and still feel fucking fresh. 100%. You know what I mean? So, but, like, 100%. on that, do you think that sports specifically, like, gave us that influence? Like, maybe, like I don't know if it's a general kind of, um, like, outlook on like all people that be like because there's people that aren't into sports and stuff but like we usually are watching like athletes retire early 30s or you hear that guy's washed or like that guy can't perform anymore mm-hmm. do you think that maybe put like because we're all Pressure, sports guys yeah. like that put that aspect in our ma- in our mind that like 30s old like 30 you can't do do it anymore sort I, of thing? I, I think in a way but also like think about when you were kids bro and you saw your teacher that person just graduated in university at like what like and you thought they were old and we look up to those you know guys, what i mean right? like teachers and mm-hmm. like, they probably just first year right out of western or whatever no, i agree that, that, i think that's wild where i realized like a 25 year old teacher who like literally the same age as us but they're teaching the youth and i'm like i'm like i went to school with you but, yeah, but that's actually, what i mean like like it's young 20, 30s, young. No, 100%. Like, at the end of the day. And I think what he just, the point he made was, was like, I think it definitely had an influence. Like, the sports athletes and... <laughs> sport, you're good. No, the sports athletes and the and entertainment as well, actors as well. So, like, there's some mm-hmm, actors yeah. that, you know, they're older and they're still pushing them, but you see they have to do plastic surgeries or different things like that just to try to put up perception. Yeah, Holly, perception. Hollywood upkeep, right? Like... <laughs> but also like artists as well too you see mm-hmm. artists all entertainment entertainment athletes but i yeah i've been hearing that drake's retired since tw- like 28 you know what i mean Facts. Like, and like dude's still pumping out albums like you can question the quality or anything still producing though right yeah, yeah. so i got a good question Straight so up. like if you retire that young do you not feel like your passion is what pushes you because like he's already got money he's got status he's got everything you want but at this point you gotta have he had a kid so now his passion is to build the future for his kid where, like, his kid's gonna probably going to be an NBA star if you think about it. His dad has him training with, like, stars, everything like that. Like, I think isn't that your goal as, like, as a parent to be like, hey, guess what? I'm going to give you everything that I didn't have and you're going to do better than me. Well, I think, like, when it comes into regards like that, is um, that, like, Initially, like, the goal is money. Like, for anyone that comes from, like, a family that wasn't, like, properly self-sustained or, like, with enough income or anything along those lines, um, the initial goal is money. But what money allots and unlocks is the freedom to then realign, right? Mm -hmm. And there's many ways to get money, like, good or bad, and that's just the path that you're going to fall on. But once you realign, then it's, like, making sure that you have that impact and that focus on your community 
and that will also in turn like help you like develop and give everything to your kids as well you know well setting this the proper example for them there no i agree and i remember that's that's kind of how we formed we've seen that you know we follow the money we follow the money we start investing we start following the money and bro and that's like even to the answer like it's because it kind of crosses over in terms of like the elderly people like our parents and the older generation so much respect to them, bro. They came over here. A lot of them are immigrants or descendant immigrants, and bro, they worked hard, bro. They just hustled, and now we have the opportunity. We can trade, get into the New York Stock Exchange from our phone, you know. And yeah. so we start following the money. We're like, yo, damn, maybe we should start paying attention to this. And yeah. like you said, it can help you rely. Mm-hmm. The so, thing with money is like, is like, like, like Jesse said, like this is kind of why like we grouped up and started. It was yeah. originally because of financial literacy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like money is such a weird thing where it's like an emotional attachment or like, like it's like how you grew up. No one teaches you anything about money except your parents. You and know you know what? If your parents come from a third world country, like mine did, we don't talk and money. and and it's just debt, then then that's all they know about money. So but I love that you actually said that because I was about to say the only people I ever talk money with is my friends, like you, you, you. Our parents don't talk money because they don't have like they weren't taught how to have it, right? They're they're taught how to have debt. No, and it's just hard like, because like like people have a misconception. They think money is something that's just supposed to be recycled. But when like when like you really think about like money and you really read about these books, it's like no, nah, like money makes money. Money is yeah. the best vehicle to make more money. Yeah. So if it's not making you money, it's not it's not. It's that not goes money. back to like the the prior to like our generations being educated or having access to the education mm-hmm. is like back then like they only knew what they were taught was like to be consumers, right? Go out and buy that car. Go out and like get that bigger house like that's what they were taught right and so anyone that had no understanding of money for like taught to them or even didn't have the ability to learn because they didn't choose to go into a field of finance um they they just became a product of really like what was taught like you see commercials and ads all the time and it's always like spend 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 right it's never like commercial and ads of oh open like we're seeing them a bit now quest trade and stuff but like oh open this etf or oh like get into this type of investment. It's all bye bye bye. Those commercials, you know those commercials because they're riding the wave. We know <laughs> yeah, them. yeah. We all those Robin commercials. Hood, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. Quest- riding the yeah. wave. Like they don't care, man. They got exposed. They're doing it anyways. Let's make a commercial and just try. I guess make some money off of this. Mm-hmm. There's no intention about actually educating. I mean, I will go to that. We're not going down that rabbit hole too far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, but, boys, uh, boys, but, boys in the park. Let's do a little swap up. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna introduce a new guest. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I know. What a guy. Eh? I, I knew Coca should have been in the very corner from the beginning. Okay, let's go. Papi shampoo. Papi shampoo. Papi shampoo. Ah. This is a big one. This is a big one. What the fuck is this? This is a big one. This is my guy. Woo! 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 I've been waiting. What's good? What's good? What's good? Comes in. Okay. All right. Let's go. All right. Am I good? So, boys. Introduction. Boys. Give a little one-two intro, yo. Facts. Am I good? Am I good, yo? Right. Drizzy, Drizzy. Okay. Go ahead, bro. I've been on the podcast a couple times. <laughs> okay. Introduce yourselves, boys. Yo, Sergio. Okay. They, they've met me before. Yeah, yeah, all right. They may, hey, you forget that I'm, I'm a pioneer. I'm a pioneer right. here, huh? I'm a pioneer. Right. OG to OG. Yeah, they forget I'm a pioneer. So I, I was in the first couple uh, couple episodes, CCC, when this was CCC. Uh, me and Ricardo did it. Uh, first, The first podcast with Sergio two of them. and I. Two, two of, them. of them. Four episodes. <laughs> and they were yes, fire, please. bro. They yes, were please. fire. Trust me. Um, yeah, no. These the, Ricardo's been my dog for, for a while now. Um, so was Brandon. Oh, my bad. And Jesse, Jesse, I met him in Ottawa when I went up to Ottawa and they were living together. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Let me say some things. <laughs> Let me say some things because y'all, y'all crushed it today. So I gotta just get it out of the way right away. I'm super proud of you guys. You, uh, Jordan, and David. Y'all fucking went crazy. crazy. Like 21 kilometers is not easy, and y'all made it look easy. So good for you. Appreciate you, brother. Good for you. Appreciate you. And then the thing is, I don't know if people know this, but Sergio was was committed. He was training. He was running. Got into an injury, you know what I mean, which we can't control. But but you know what? Uh, should we sneak peek it? October, we're running in Toronto half marathon. Sergio's ah. dead. Too. Next October, next October. Next October, not this October. That's next fucking October. crazy. I'm, I'm trying to get him to do the full marathon. We're gonna do the full one. We'll see. I mean, yo, how could you turn down a a full marathon down uh down Lakeshore? You know, with the Bro. CN Tower beside you. With uh, what lake is it? 
I, I'm not too good in Canada geography, but what lake is it? That's, that's that's right there. Whatever. How could you turn that Lake down? Ontario. Lake Ontario. Whatever. <laughs> hey, good on you. How could you turn down a CN Tower run with the with Lake Ontario beside you? You know, you gotta Facts. do it. Oh, you gotta do it. Facts. Brendan, how was the, how how was uh, today for you, bro? Uh, well, it was good. It was good seeing you guys uh, do something that you said you were gonna do. But, yeah, I'm proud of you guys, and no, well, that's good fun. Facts, and you made it. You made some money too. Oh yeah, my bad. Um, what yeah, I made some money. Was there some props? No, 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 was making money, bro. Was there money? Was there game props? I was playing slots while they were running. He was oh, playing <laughs> slots. I thought there was game props like nah, Ricardo nah, nah. under two hours, you know, <laughs> plus one fifty. Nah. You should have done that. <laughs> you should have done <laughs> that. Joke. That would have been funny. No, yeah, I was playing oh. slots while they were running. I was up a hundred bucks, but I lost it. Oh, you lost all the hundred? Yeah, 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 I kept playing. I lost. Oh, fuck it. So half. Yeah. No, boys. Oh. No, that's wild that you guys really did this, yo. Like, 8 a.m. came around. I knew that 8 a.m. was the start time, and I was still in my crib. And, I'm, you know, I was with Laura, and I'm like, yo, these guys just started. Let me let me get some running right now. Yeah. I was just on spot. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. So, good for you, bro. I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. At the end of the day, like, like I said, like, it's always kind of been, like, the squad, the team, the group. You know what I mean? Like, we've all been motivating one another. And, like, yeah. the thing is, like, I feel like a lot of people don't have that. Let's right. be fucking honest. A lot of people don't have yeah, that's real. a group of people who are like, yo, like, yeah. like you did this, you did this. When are we going to do this? Like, yeah. like sadly, bro, a lot of people don't have that. And that's no, why, like, no. you know, thank God we're all here together. Cause, like, like, how long have we been training for this now? Like, it's been a long time. Like, honestly, like, <laughs> since August 5th, bro. I mean, no, April 5th. April yeah. 5th. It's been a while, man. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even summer yet. I definitely remember this. 5 a.m. is you and Jeff. Yeah, I know. Oh, my Jeff, God. Shout out Jeff. It's phenomenal. Shout out Jeff, bro. real one, bro. Man. Crazy. But all of us yeah, though, were, were, you, were you boxing out too. Jordan a couple of times and uh, yeah, in, in sparring? Yeah. Then he got cracked a couple of times. Oh, yeah, he's in the bathroom. Yeah, he caught a one too. A couple so he can't <laughs> he can't defend himself. But yo, Jordan, I heard you got cracked a couple of times in training. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. No, but bro, like all of us though, even Brandon's going every morning five a.m. How's that been, bro? It's good. So you actually go every morning five a.m. I or, try to go every morning. But like, but like three times so a week mostly. Do. Yeah, minimum I go three times. That's a week. crazy though. Yeah. That's, bro, it's big. I try to do five, but minimums. Uh, Three. How's that been? Good. It's tough. What's the toughest part about it, though? What? Just going. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think the toughest part of it. It gets like, easier, getting, though. It's just getting there. 100%. Yeah. Like, just getting up out of bed, especially when you're going that early. I think when you go later in the day, it gets a little bit easier. But if you're going early, early morning, I think the hardest part is the wake up. It's just right when you wake up because it's so yeah, easy it's like, just to go. Yo, if you snooze nah, for five minutes, you're, 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 you're snooze. That five yeah. minutes turns to 60 minutes. And, then and you, you go, you go like, like f- three times a week, minimum two. Minimum, minimum. That's what I mean, though. But like, you, you guys, we're all actively in there. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I guess I'll ask you guys from like one by one. I'll start with Jesse. It's I like, said the first, the first, I'll say the first three weeks is always the hardest, bro. Remember, you remember when you started your journey, you were yeah, talking about this. Know, we're like, yo, I'm about to do a year of this. Yeah. And we're talking. I told you, I said, yo, honestly, it might suck, but. First three weeks is the hardest to like to build, like get past that threshold of like yo, this sucks. But after that, you might start seeing results. And once you start seeing results, you fall in love with it. And then you might hit that wall again. But once you switch it up and keep learning about what you can do with your body, bro. Yeah. And the one thing I know about is like is like with habits, it's it's it doesn't just take a month or two. Like a habit uh, to form a habit, it's more than ninety days. 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. Because like I was working out for three months straight, but like no. there was still times where I'm like, I don't know if I want to no, hit the wall. It really takes a long time. It's fucked, bro. You're gonna hit that wall, bro. 100. You feel like shit when you don't do it. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's more like, like it's, it's more like, cause, cause, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, like, in my challenge, I get to walk, right? Like, mm-hmm. some of my days I get to walk, like, where three or four kilometers, but it's just like, like, I'm actually to the point where it's like, why can't I walk? Like, 100%. exactly. Move your body. Yeah. Back in the day, we would not survive. <laughs> Back in the day, bro. we would not survive if we did not move. And he's talking about pre-car era. He's talking about like when he you knows. had to walk, bro. When you had to walk. Like people that don't fathom those bro, things. You're like, dead if you're not walking, <laughs> gathering, getting the meat for your family. Oh, you're, you're I dead. Know, okay, your family's are, are, are descendants of immigrants. So you know you heard the stories of your parents talking about I had to walk three thousand oh, miles of school. I had to go pick trees and milk cows, yeah. get my younger siblings, and walk across to Japan, and then back to Africa, and then cross the sea. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy stories. Like oh my god. It's a meme, bro. We're bro. meant to move. Oh, no, 100. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's okay. I'll start from here, but we want to go down the line. Like, what has physical activity done for you, bro? Okay, I know Jesse's a Jesse's a mad athlete, bro. Uh, yeah, bro. For me, it's it's part of my identity, bro. I'll say like, in terms of like, I want to say in terms of my identity of like, like that's all I am. But in terms of my identity, in terms of like, just like man, competition, like perseverance, bro, overcoming, you know, giving yourself every day to just suffering, but for a greater cause in terms of like health 
You know what I'm saying? And as an athlete, when I was younger, I played at everything. Volleyball, track, soccer, basketball, football. I got older, so like for me, it was just three-sport athlete all the way up to college. And, man, it's just, like I said, part of my identity. Like, just health, man, is important. Kobe is one of the guys I definitely look up to. Rest in peace. Kobe, and bro. Yeah, so. man. And just in terms of, like, enjoying the process, he's definitely one of those people that kind of put my mind of, yo, it's not about... Yes, like hitting those achievements are important, but the process of those are things, the process of it is what you're gonna remember. Fox. Like Game of Thrones fan. Like, is it the journey? When you watch those things, like, is it the journey, the adventure, no, but for real? Like, no. the adventure, like, yes, all those big moments are, are crazy, but like, man, watching those people grow up, watching those characters, even just watching a movie, watching a character develop, that's yourself, yourself developing, hitting those, you're leveling up, bro. Every six months is a level up. You're on level two now, you're level three now. You're going up and just like enjoying those moments. I feel like that's just so important because, like you said, we were talking about earlier, is that that's just real life, that's reality. You have to, you're going to hit perseverance. You're going to have the moments where you're like, yo, I got to sacrifice whatever is financially, whatever it is, time for the next couple months and for something bigger, whatever it is, when you have to do it. So Thanks, bro. it's huge, bro. It's huge. Physical, I don't care. No, it's a physical, phys- when it comes to the physical, like physicality like that, like you'll see who you are. Okay, bro. I wanna, I wanna get something straight, bro. I've seen you moving like, like out of Sanye, bro. <laughs> oh, you do? Are you doing MMA? <laughs> What's going on? No, 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 no. Throwback. No, 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 no. No, I'm. Cause you not playing. Uh, no, no. Those, those are, those are, those are some different times, bro. I was just doing little, little drills here and there, you know. Okay, okay, Fun so times, nice. man. Nah. I want to definitely. I have so much respect for. I, mean, I think we all watch UFC and boxing things like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah you just know a what? lot of respect. Well, for after that. watching out of Sa- sorry to cut you off. No, but after good, watching out of Sanya, you want to do shit like that. You want to yeah, do ninja shit bro. for sure. Hundred percent. Respect it. Yeah. Respect. No, you respect. Oh man, there you go. Anime, bro. anime too, man. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm here wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt. You can't see, but like, man, there's a lot of man. There's a lot of athletes who love anime, and so just like just seeing it comes out to similar things, but good versus evil, perseverance, because these are real things, reality. Like, especially mm-hmm. as men, females deal with it too. They, they, they see it, man. And it's like, yo, you have to, you have to work. The way, every day, and it's not just, it might not be physical work, men, it's, it's, you have to overcome something every single day. You wake up, you have to do something every single day. You know what I'm saying? Wherever it is, and it, and it grows. As you grow, it, it will grow that, that responsibility. Jordan Pearson, that responsibility is important. That sacrifice is important. Fox. And so, Bro, the anime, different things like that. Sports is like, bro, it's. It, I find it so intriguing, but also so cool, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Adesanya, like, bro, it's cool, man. Crazy. No, I love it, bro. You actually look like a fucking professional MMA fighter. Bro, I want to <laughs> listen. He was moving in your own video. Like, listen, was, give, me, give me a little where's time, man. Bro, I saw the video I, I somewhere. Snapchat. I'll, put, I'll send it to you, bro. Yeah, 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 I'll, 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 yeah, close man. friends. Yeah. Give okay, some okay Brandon, what about you, bro? How has physical activity changed like your life? And like, when did that kind of happen, kind of thing? Well, I guess it started happening when I started going to the gym every day. And it just the hard work you put into going to the gym, it just start it tra- starts to uh, bleed into everything else you do. So like you'll have more motive, you have more motivation to work on other projects, other things. Um, yeah. So you find like it clears your mind though in that sense. Yeah, 100%. it helps you. Yeah, it definitely helps you think clear. You run, you just run smoother. I've mm-hmm. learned. Yeah, like if you just sit around, you do nothing. You just your brain goes to shit. Yeah, you got fog. You got brain fog. Yeah. And bro, that's one of the most respectful because this guy actually goes like three times a week, five a.m. every it's week. Real, bro, yeah. that's so fucking real. And I don't think the more people you meet, I think you're like I don't think you're just like you're you're part of a rare percent of people on the prop on the population of the earth, bro. Hundred percent. In terms of, like mental for it too, like you might not realize it, but actually, bro, a lot of people cannot wake up five a.m. with no like no one's paying you to do that. Yeah. yeah. You have no one saying, "Oh, here, go do this for you. you're doing it for yourself." That's oh. facts. No one's paying you. Like that's bro, actually so real. Exactly. That. Like that's it. it. Yeah. Just showing up to yeah. Gym, uh, the top five percent yeah. Demographic yeah. Gym really. stay. Yeah. Gym yeah. stay in business by the people who don't show up. Yeah. Build facts. facts. Yeah. Build different. Build different. Yeah. Exactly what Coca said. Build it's different. Real. Yeah. Okay. Papi shampoo. So, uh, yo, I won't lie, yo, like, like this guy's been working out for a minute. Like, he's motivated me to, like, even do my 365 challenge because this guy's been working out for I longer, know, bro. Man. Like, but straight the I fuck up, Sergio. like, committed with his diet and everything, bro. Like, like I respect Sergio so much for that. And, like, bro, like, explain how physical activity for you Max. and that. Um, and what made you change, you know, like, explain that. Ever since I was, like, a little kid. My bad, hold up. I'm like, I'm a popular man. I'm getting a phone call. You know? okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> this guy is a popular man in the city. I'm a popular no, man. I'm but no, no, ever since a little kid, you know, I was a little fat boy. I was a little chubby kid. So, like, I always wanted, you know, a little six pack. I always wanted, you know, pecs and shit like that. So, like, 
ever since like I would say like grade 10 grade 11 is when I really started getting into you know going to the gym um yeah there was a switch though bro there was a switch where like where like you like started going every day and even now bro you're just looking chiseled like no switch I know the switch and it was actually when I moved to Ottawa with Deshaun and I say that and I saw these guys (laughs) and I saw these guys working out crazily during football yeah. During football season, like they would work out twice a week, or sorry, twice a yeah, day. Shout out to the days. <laughs> oh no, yeah, that like, time was, was different. Bro. It was yeah, yeah, like or, like you were probably like first or second year. Yeah, like yeah, around yeah, yeah. there. Like I saw these guys working out crazily, and like I used to give myself excuses when I was in high school. I'm like, oh, I don't have time. Like I got homework, even though I didn't do it. <laughs> I got homework. I got I got this. I got that. And I'm like, you know what? After high school, when I have the time, when 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 it's all on my own time, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to the gym. Like consistently mm-hmm. and after high school was when i moved to ottawa and like i saw these bands working out every single day no excuses like whether you're sore or not like you're going to the gym so up. That, that's Definitely. that's what started it yeah and you became a chef out of all this because bro the best meals come out of city yo house, yo right? so <laughs> I, started cook, I started cooking when i was in ottawa like i i started fit man cook um, if you know it fit man cook that's the guy that uh that started the the the, the little cooking journey for me um Little lettuce wraps, little uh, <laughs> fucking the famous lettuce wraps, yeah. the lettuce wraps. What else? The uh, sweet potato, shepherd's pie, shit like that. Shit. Before I even know how to cook, like yo, it was like a trial and error. I remember one time I cooked potatoes for like three hours because I didn't know. How to cook them. <laughs> but all I knew was like what I knew from my house. My house, it was it was like yo, you gotta cook things. Keep in mind, my parents don't know how to cook. Ditto. <laughs> uh, Sorry, okay. but my parents don't know how to cook, so. The 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 That's little like the 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 model in the in the crib or in the in the kitchen is like you gotta cook things low and slow so to make sure that they're actually cooked. yeah well, 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 they don't know how to cook our westernized ways sure let's say that yes let's say that. yes because exactly. they're used to cooking the old school way right. exactly so like low and slow That's how you gotta yeah, cook. yeah, yeah. low and okay. so bro okay. I put sweet potatoes in low on low and slow bro to not drag it on it was three or four hours of sweet potatoes cooking yeah <laughs> and that's like crazy. yo i was so cheese by the end of the time but anyways that's what started my my whole uh my whole healthiness i think it was moving to ottawa and seeing the sean and seeing like all the football guys working out every single day no matter no matter what that's dope bro no matter what that goes to show that environment plays everything bro 100 you know what, what i mean literally environment plays everything the people yeah, yo i remember them saying like yo they, they used to run at five like puking during like mid jog <laughs> you're you're not jog sprint Shout out to you sprint yeah yeah sprint Shout out to DA. Puke, keep sprinting so like on. once i heard that i'm like you know what you you can't you can't say no to a workout if these guys are going at 5 a.m after coming home after a 12 hour day that's one thing i always say and i've told jesse for a minute university athletes I don't know how the fuck they do it there's 40 hours a week of school 40 hours a week on athletics explain that bro like like i feel like like you guys are superheroes but because you guys actually deal with a lot of fucking shit and honestly it is those things also kind of push like shows you how strong the human body is bro like and there's honestly there's a lot of other professions that you would think that you like that are similar to athletes in terms of like the amount of stress they take like look at doctors bro a lot of them they like they'll sleep at the hospital their shifts are crazy bro yeah. firefighters their shifts are crazy yeah. you know what i'm saying like so there's a lot of, like man the mental fortitude is it comes with mental fortitude bro like yeah. the, the body is repetition like like i said after the first little bit like it sucks it definitely does suck but it is crazy man like you're not lying how did you find like when you were balancing all that bro because it's probably Tough. so much things at once like you have Tough. a student in university taking you know like 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 for example me like i took like physical health education mm-hmm. kinesiology at queens mm-hmm. that's all i was worried about mm-hmm. is passing my classes mm-hmm. But I'm not worried about like training and beating another team you know, and facts. making sure my physicals are like how, how was that? No, that's I would say specifically on that that was like, extremely hard. And I would say it's probably harder because I wasn't I wasn't secure in terms of what I wanted to do with my future mm. in terms of like off the field. So I like, I knew like the path I was taking, but I wasn't like 100 percent sure about it. So like I wasn't like I knew that I wanted to play football. I wanted to play you know I wanted that was like I wanted to do. But football like school you know you want to do school you want to take care of that as well. So like you kind of like it's you try you just try to balance, bro. You try to balance. You find a time where you try to find that time. You try to get help as well. And that's an, yo, oh my gosh, networking is huge in college, bro. That, bro. Networking in college is massive. You know what I'm saying? Notes, meshing with people to get notes before before quizzes, before tests. How people, you know, having study groups so you know when things are on on time. People remember remind you, did you get that? Yo, 
the things come up on Saturday, did you hand it in? Did you do it yet? Yo, yes, no. You know what I'm saying? Those things are huge. That goes a long way. Yeah. So it is tough. Did you know stuff. anyone at Carlton before you got there? Yeah, bro. Carlton, man. <laughs> the story of Carlton is funny because I, so I went to, I went to camp prep in uh, Connecticut at high school. And so after that. In the that, States, right? Yes, in the, in the States, in Connecticut. So I was going to, my plan was to go, like, just stay in the States, bro. And so I came back. I took a visit to Carlton. And after I took the visit to Carlton, I seen some people. Shout out to Marley Patterson, real one. Oh, Marley's my a dog. real one, bro. When are you going to get Marley yeah, on this bro. podcast? Real Marley, Marley, get bro. me a crib. I, I see you show <laughs> Right, real estate. Get me a crib, Marley. Marley, real estate, saying? Patterson. Shout him out, bro, for mm-hmm. real. So, yeah, Marley's one of the dogs that I knew that was out there. And, um, but, yeah, I took a visit there. And, man, I saw the vibe. I wasn't too far from home. Like, yo, I like Carlton, bro. And their jerseys were beautiful, bro. The Oregon yeah, jerseys. They had some sick Oh, jerseys, my bro. gosh. Before Oregon sued them. Oh, my goodness. Oregon jersey, sued Carlton? Bro, Oregon said nice that. You guys are having our, the wings? Are you Say crazy? word. Yeah. 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 It in Quickly. It's quick. Done. Jeez. Done. Damn. Where were the wings? What do you mean? So, so the or- those the jerseys best. were, bro. So I, I never seen The it. Oregon wings. Talking. Oregon had the wings on the shoulder pads. Yeah, yeah. And on the helmets. Carlton, we did the same thing. Yeah. Same wings? Same wings. And then shoulder pads and the helmets. Yeah, they had to get your marketing. Your marketing team is but still lacking. Bro, <laughs> no, but bro, honestly, the red, the black, the gray. No, I'm saying no. The wing, the wing idea is bro. Nice. The Something gray like jerseys were like, so unique, bro. Carlton, and then after that, on top of it, because of that, that was bringing. You know, we were getting recruits because of that, and Guelph was another team that took advantage of that. They put in a rule that you're only allowed to like wear like, three jerseys per year. So we had like six jerseys, bro, and like no, you guys can't do that. No, we have to. So we had to start so like altered. Yeah, man, it was crazy yeah. foolishness. Man, we're ready. It was to crazy, but yo, no, it was crazy. So yeah, Mar- uh, Marley's one of the guys that I knew, and also Nate. Shout out to Nate Bahar too. So anyway, so to continue that story, like I left. I went to JUCO, and then after JUCO, I'm like, yo, I'm coming out to Canada. And I remember Nate Bahar and Coach Beck. Shout out to Coach Beck too, real one, man. They came to my church, bro. Came Jeez. to my church, bro. They came to my church Jeez. and brought the uh, um, the letter of ten, and I actually signed at my church there. So they came at church for the last Jeez. little bit. Yeah, bro. Nate, Nate was there. That was Back with the real ones, bro. And I, after yeah. that, I'm like, yeah, man, these guys are real. And after, bro, more people came out. Bro came out. We had, bro, there was a lot of Toronto guys out there, man. It was, it was a vibe, man. Bro. It was cool. It was a vibe. You're saying you're puppet guy, but they had to recruit you, man, bro. I, man, Ravens, like. That team, that team should have won championships. Oh, I know, bro. We all know that team should have won championships. Bro. I remember, bro. I okay, I championship. You'll see for a couple of games, especially Multiple. against. I, I know Western Shout the big dogs. Too. Cardi, man, them. I, I know the West. Cardi, West, the coach. Yeah, Cardi, yeah, Cardi, Cardi, Cardi. I know that I went to a couple Western games, and I know that Western is the big dogs here in Ontario. Y'all had them. If it wasn't for a couple of Fugazi penalty oh calls, God. y'all had them. Like what I mean. Fake calls, fake calls. They were politics. There was politics involved. <laughs> it's crazy. If it wasn't for a couple calls, y'all crazy. had them. And now uh, Western, uh, listen. Shout out to Western. Westerns, uh, listen, even though like they they were, they beat us up every now and then, we got listen. We got a, we got our look back every now and then as well too. <laughs> they're they're bro teams like that. Sherbrooke, Montreal, you know, um, Alberta teams like that. That are like they're paving the way for sports, man. You sports, Carlton basketball team, people, like. Success dynasties, bro. Showing that, like, yo, we have athletes that literally, if, if they were born across the border, they'd be going D1 and they'd be going league. And it's a truth, bro. Yo, shout out Tunde to Lake. T- bro. <laughs> Is he still in the you league? You drop, bro. Tunde, yes, of course, bro. Yeah, yeah. Tunde, that's a, that's a, he has a ring, bro. Man. I respect that guy, bro. I, I remember, I, I'll tell a story. I'll tell a story. I remember, I, I met him one time, like during Carlton, right? One time. Yeah. Or a couple times, sure. With, when I was with the Sean and uh, uh, like, chilling with the Sean, right? Yeah. I saw him downtown in the club in Ottawa once he was in the CFL and everything like that, bro. Rowdy. <laughs> Rowdy. I saw him one time when he was when he was out in the CFL, bro. I see him downtown. He, Ricardo, how are you doing, bro? Shake my hand, bro. I'm like, bro, real. Like, so real, bro. That guy's so real, so humble, so so sick on the fucking field. Bro, he's, bro, he's crazy on the field, bro. He's, he's, he's literally a human joystick, bro. Yeah. Return it, like, that's one thing that really impressed me, like, Everything else, I think he's an athlete and he's really intelligent, which is like why he takes advantage at those positions, man. But the punt return skills really shows how much of a dominant athlete he is. Bro. Special teams, if you play sports, you play football, you know special teams is a different ball game now. Yeah. It's athlete, doggy, dog. <laughs> yeah, I got I to gotta pay my rent type. It's, you already know how it <laughs> is. But yeah, bro. Special teams, bro, special teams are, the dogs are different. It's, it's not a joke out there, yeah, bro. It's doggy, yeah. dog. Yeah. And yo, catching that ball, all those guys are coming at you trying to kill you. And you, whoop, whoop, whoop. Out of there, and Wazy does it, man, bro. Beast, bro. Yo, I'm, I want to take a full 360 turn right yeah. here because I have these two right here. Yeah. What do we think about Andrew Tate being canceled? Oh my gosh, yeah. Yo, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. 
Hold on. Go ahead now. We want this YouTube to stay on there, right? Like, it's we want cool. this video to stay on YouTube, so. It's, it's cool. We can talk about it. We just can't. Let's, let's not get, you know, too deep into it. Yeah, but what do you think about Andy Tate getting canceled? Let's start. Let's start I think it's cool. bullshit. Let me, <laughs> let me go right away. I think it's bullshit. You know what? I think if you don't like Andy Tate, I think if you have a problem against Andy Tate, it's that you haven't heard his, you haven't heard his full interviews. I think that you've heard little snippets here and there, or you're just repeating what everyone else has said about Andrew Tate or what, like the whole uh, mainstream media saying about Andrew Tate. I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's like your genuine opinion. Cause, cause if you hear him, it's hard to, it's hard to not I hear agree saying, like, with you what you gotta listen saying. to the full. If clip. you don't hear the full point, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to not agree. You know, like maybe he says it in a different way. Maybe he says it in a way that it's a little bit harsh, but at the end of the day, like, what one of the podcasts, uh, what one of the what one of the hosts said the other day was, you know what? If you talk to eight year olds or people over sixty, people even over fifty, they would probably all agree with you. But it's mm. it's the age of it's the it's the internet age that's like they can take a little snippet of your video that's and turn it. it and twist it into something that it isn't, Facts. and they won't agree with you. Yeah, because because back in the day they couldn't clip shit like that. Exactly, and yeah. and what he's saying is, you know what? It might be a, it might come off aggressive. It might come off. Um. Rowdy? Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Rowdy. It might come off rowdy, but <laughs> personally, I don't think it is. I think it's... it's. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. I don't think yeah, it's rowdy. No, no, no. I don't think I, it's rowdy. That's respectable. Yes. What do you think, Ben? Well, the, prob- the problem with banding Andrew Tate is uh, it's the banding of speech and the banding of ideas. Facts. So if you're going to ban him, you got to at least... You got to put him... Let him defend himself. So then if you... Do, sorry. If you disagree with Andrew Tate, then you need to basically... Explain why you disagree with Andrew Tate, not just ban him off the platform and stop conversations. I got one more thing. I got one more thing. It's okay if you go against Andrew Tate. That's not a problem. Facts. The problem is the fact that he's being deleted. You know, you might you might be celebrate you might be celebrating. Oh yes, he's being deleted, but you won't be celebrating once this happens to you. You know what I mean? Like. It, it shouldn't be happening to anybody. It's just freedom of speech. He's not. He's not doing anything illegal. He's not. He's not saying anything, uh, fucking like illegal. That's it. It's. It's not anything illegal. So the fact that he's being deleted off something that's just freedom of speech, it, it should be scary to everybody. But the you, fact that they can do that to that, but they won't do that to like all the X-rated shit that's on the internet. That's in, what I'm on, on the internet. All the all the foul, foul, foul shit that's on the internet. Shorty's but be the, praising Kim Kardashian. Yeah. It's not even crazy. No, but listen, 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 listen. Her mother like put out her sex tape, like like her. Like, it, it, it's it's actually proven. Like Ray right. J was talking about that shit a couple days ago. And yes, listen, facts. and shorties are praising her. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We delete Andrew Tate. Don't risk the fact that you delete Bro. that guy, but you don't, <laughs> but you don't delete all the foul <laughs> shit that's on the started. internet. It's the fact facts. that you delete him, but you don't delete all the foul shit that's on the internet, it, it, it speaks volumes. But you, you know? don't get freedom of speech on social media platforms. That's a problem. That's a slippery That's a slope. That's it is a problem, but it's just like it's like I said, it's their Jesse, platform. I remember the days where we talked That's about this, bro. Bro, that's, like, that's why I'm, just, I'm here just thinking about like everything. Like, bro, it's, it's you can't tell them how to run their business. It's, no, I agree. I agree, but at the same time, like, if you you abide in the country, you gotta abide by those laws, and the freedom of speech is still a thing, man. You, but it's like I can go into you, I can go into your store and say shit, and you can kick me out and ban me from your store. I do agree. I do. Agree. That's the problem. I do agree. It's a slippery with that. slope. It's a slippery slope. Like I agree, you shouldn't ban them, but like it's their yeah. their site. I think the biggest problem is business. that these social media platforms are literally the most popular in the whole entire world. Yeah. Like Facebook. The problem Instagram. is that's how all ideas are shared now. No, I mean like they're all coming from like America. They're all oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's very like, oh, propaganda. Yeah. We can talk about all those things. It's yeah. I agree. It's bro, propaganda is a strong thing, bro. It's a dangerous thing. It's yeah. a like, slippery slope, bro. It really and is. You say, Donald Trump, the sitting president, got banned as well. And he's gonna run again, so, bro. He's gonna run again in twenty twenty four. And he's gonna yeah. come fucking strong. And he's gonna win. If he runs, he's winning. I don't give a damn what anyone says. If if that guy runs again, he's winning. He probably will. Because people lie. are sick of Sleepy Joe. But I just hope. I just hope. <laughs> man, Yo, the I videos hope, of him bro, like doing, do not, <laughs> like, like shaking, shaking imaginary <laughs> people's hands and falling. This guy's on crazy. Fall off the bike. Oh my gosh. The, the bicycle fall, bro. That was crazy. Hilarious, bro. I said this Hilarious. is dangerous. How is he president? This is dangerous. No, but it's actually it's actually dangerous. Though. But bro, people are not paying. Bro, heard she like sheeple is a real thing. Like people don't understand. Like 
and that's mm-hmm. what you, I hope like man the people around you your friends your loved ones if you can just be a beacon for them you know you're encouraging them to think for themselves because you'll know, all those things you know there are signs showing you to things things are happening bro it's not bro 10 years was not the same way it is now and we're talking about freedom of speech being taken away from people for for ideas that are not that serious for ideas for things are actually aligned with things are actually yo you know, yes some things i don't agree with the way like the life some lifestyles he, that uh says but the moral things he's telling people is true down, yeah. Jordan Peterson as well, bro. Did you see how they came for Jordan Peterson, bro? Yeah, I part Jordan Peterson because yo, the man is he actually is fighting. Like literally, you can tell yo, he's yeah, putting his life. Like, there's a there's a war going yeah, on. Yeah, that's why part because yeah. you can tell like he's, his life is on the line for that. So mm-hmm. but yeah, man. And shout out Michaela Peterson because she's hard. Michaela bro, Peterson's bro, podcast. Michaela Peterson is is crazy. It's crazy for that. Crazy. Yo, yeah, hold on. Somewhat swap. swap in for Jordan because Jordan's been trying to get in for the last 30 minutes. Yeah. Why do you get out? Oh, like that's, Jordan. Like, that's why I don't understand. Like, I that. That's why I don't understand. Like, why get, get video. out, bro? Get on Trust. video, Jordan. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, like, why get out, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that's my problem, get, bro. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Like, get on video. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I'm so confused. Give me some time to talk, then. Listen. Uh, yeah. Yo, spit it out. Spit it out. Nah, not even that. Just Is the live going still or no? Yeah, how's the live been? I was going well. I love it though. Jordan, Jordan. No, so listen. Chain. Spit it out. Not even this. Spit it out. Wait, wait, wait. Any, any big questions? Wish. Or? Wish. Wish. Jordan, what's up? Spit it out. So, what do you have to say, bro? So, let me start off with this. So, I swapped Sergio on it in thinking he wanted to come in. No, he was offering me a drink. I still had a drink. So, like, it was kind of a bad play on my end, right? And then, <laughs> see my boy Habs over here. Wait, what? Yeah. What about No, me? it was. I seen you making plays in. The Hold basket. up, we have freaking Havel here, bro. And that's this is I'm the saying. first time a man like Havel Yusuf is making an appearance. Yeah. Great guy, one of my best friends, my brother. Yeah, so yeah, where did my drink go? Let me finish the story. Oh my god, is that your drink? Are you gonna take my drink? I thought that was your drink. And no, that's no, 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 no it's mine. It. So this is, that's what I'm saying. Let me finish the story, cause like Havel's looking. I was like, yo, tag yeah. me in, tag me in. No, no. So Hav wanted in. So no, I want to hear Hav's part. It's not true. That's, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. What happened? happened? You want to tagged in? No, you, I was ready to jump in. So that's what I'm saying. So like, Yeah, yeah. All I said was, Jesse, let me know when you want to swap. Jesse said, no problem. You're Jesse's over there. Jesse's not ready to swap, yo. No, no. <laughs> no, I Brandon wanted out. So I looked at Brandon. That's a two swap. Oh, yeah. at this point, time for you to go in. The, the anyways, issue. Anyways, let, yo. The, the issue Yo, was let's just dive right into it with Habs though. Yeah. How what are, we, what are we diving into? Sorry, the, the issue was what? Sorry? The issue was Coke is sitting over there, trying to get everyone's attention, saying, "Let me in, let me in." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> literally, the most. no. It reminded me of a kid at the jungle gym at McDonald's <laughs> back in the day. Let me on. Let He's me a WWE, Yeah. He was a WWE tag team. Player. And we all just said, "Coke, relax, Ooh, relax. Let them, let them do this." I thing. won't lie. I saw him going this. I was like, "Papa." Don't worry, we won't. Yo, we won't take your spot. Bro. Don't worry. <laughs> to be honest, with you, I was just trying to facilitate how people come in and out. Anyways, Habs, mm-hmm. for those who don't, don't know you, don't grab yeah. me like that ever. Eh? <laughs> I hope you know that. Eh? Don't ever fucking grab back in my head. <laughs> okay, okay. How about this? What? How's that? How's I'm that? Dead. That's <laughs> a clip. Yo, that's a clip. Yeah, Sergio? it is. It is it's gonna be a clip. Don't yeah, see, because you got that metal on, you think you can talk loud? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, Sergio. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> So no, you, you and I, let's talk for a second. These two guys here are flashing these medals. I see that. Yeah. And, and the hoodies. And the hoodies. Yeah. Let me flash my chain. There you go. That's about yeah. all it is. That's <laughs> all that ice I got. Yeah. Right so let's be honest. Theirs is looking a lot better. But yo, Habs. Talk to me. I talk appreciate to me. you, brother, having us over. This is Habs right here. Yeah. I told you, open door policy. Don't sleep, though. Habs is a businessman, entrepreneur, yeah. owns his own company yeah. out here, oh, cash yeah. flowing from this property, Airbnb yeah. in it. Yeah. Bro, how's everything been? Honestly, good, like busy. It's, uh, I would say like the main thing I'm learning from this entire experience is just like time management. So you're Airbnb in this crib, right? Yeah, hold um, on. that's news to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, you let, know let's, this? let's hear it. Let's hear the Airbnb so, business because I'm interested. Like I'm, I mean, f- new to it, very fresh. Uh, I've probably had... I think five bookings so far, um, and my one main of them was like for a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, one of them was for 15 days. It was a family from Colombia. Did you sleep in the car, or where did you sleep? No, I sleep at home. <laughs> I got born and raised in London. You know, I got family here, so okay. so, so that's a blessing. So you have and, somewhere to go home to. Yeah, I got somewhere to go home to. 
Um, if I'm real lucky, I got someone to go home to. Jeez! But that's a clip. Let me just say this: most <laughs> times I'm not lucky. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. So, right, right. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like my, my my main goal is is turn this property into cash flow, um, and, and, and go from there. What got honestly. you into the Airbnb game? Yeah. What got me into it? Yeah. Uh, honestly, big shout out. What got me into it is probably Ricardo, <laughs> my boy. Um, because like what like what sparked it was you getting into real estate. And, and obviously we hang out from, you know, as often as we can. So, so when you were inspired by it and when you got into real estate, I mean, you, I think, I don't even know how it started, but I think we at some point started talking What's about crazy. I remember one time in the winter, we yeah. were walking, we went for a hike. and I were yeah. going for a hike Me, and you we and Simba. Park with Simba. Yeah. And then we we're talking, we we're talking and I was like, yeah, like I want to get into a crib. Yeah. You know, maybe I eventually want to Airbnb it. Yeah. And then bro, like you did it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was, uh stressful long like difficult process and it got to the point where uh it, it got to the point where like i didn't even think this first property was going to happen and you know it it all came through everything worked out um so now it's the goal is one property to two two to four you know four to eight you know best case scenario but it, it's crazy to think how it all started from me and you walking in the forest, little hike, me, you, and Simba in the dead of winter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to ask you, uh, what does it take to be a... Is this a good question or is it just a question? No, I would say it's a good question. <laughs> I look line, at Ricardo. The, no, the, I got a good what's one. What's the one-liner? That I got to go on. I got, I got a good one. Yeah. I got a good one. No, it's not a good one. I just want to ask you, like, yeah. uh, what does it take to be an Airbnb owner? host yeah. or a host <laughs> well and this is not a smart ass answer it's a dead honest answer it, it takes a property okay because honestly like I, i'm not even kidding because like w when i came up with the idea i was listing my house on airbnb i started youtubing google and like doing some research and everyone just said list it list it list it so i was like fuck i was like all i need is a property thankfully i like secured a property and you know it, it took a while but i need to get the place furnished and at least have the necessities right and uh the first time i listed it i had like the bare minimum couches tv bed and like, that's probably it you know and uh and my goal from the beginning was get five star ratings and I thought the best way to do that was like customer service. 100%. So yeah, so I I figured okay, fuck, let me like I went out of my way to make sure my first like two three get, guests felt like they were comfortable, you know. So maybe the place wasn't the most beautiful. <laughs> maybe the place wasn't wasn't the most beautiful, but they had what they needed and they felt like they could reach out to me had anything gone wrong you know was what I mean? it was it hard to set up the whole airbnb profile and all that shit uh no honestly like that's it, easy eh? it was so easy it was probably like a five minute process yeah. um is there a lot of paperwork to do it well airbnb is an electronic app well, so like, there's you know what i mean well i just say paperwork like you have to like no no like no is there insurance you have to like prove you have to yeah you have like to homeowner you have to yeah, like, that's what i'm asking yeah. I'm like, I'm asking, yeah. like i'm asking like the little details so yeah. it'd be like i need my home ownership like do i have insurance do i provide like yeah like what kind of questions does airbnb yeah. ask of you yeah. that's, no, no, yeah. that, that, that's a good question that's my bad yeah. so it's cool i always got good questions y'all are assholes so uh you don't always have good questions it's only when he stayed it's a good question it's very like airbnb was very uh very like accommodating so you don't have to submit anything um the only in terms of paperwork like no pictures or proof of ownership or nothing no like the, the the only thing i needed to do was uh what was call my insurance my home insurance like agent or whatever whatever santiago yeah big, big shout out santiago um, pinto yeah. the plug for insurance uh, no so I, I, I just yeah. I just sent well I was dealing with somebody Colombiano. else. Yeah. I was dealing with I was story. dealing with somebody else through Santiago from the same company. And I just I called her or I sent her an email and said, Hey, uh 
I'm actually listing my house on Airbnb. I think I need to update my insurance policy and my coverage. She said, yeah, no problem. Uh, we'll mail you your new coverage. Here's your new rate. And that was it. So I didn't need to sign anything. Yeah. But I think we might have a Instagram live question. We yeah. do. Somebody's asked, have you had a crazy Airbnb experience yet? Ooh, ooh, good question. Uh, good so question. I'm, I'm guessing that's for me because I don't think yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, far, no, so far at least like yeah. no one else here is listed on Airbnb. Um, I haven't had a crazy experience. I've, I think I've had four people stay at my property so far and in the next month between now and the end of October, I've got another five or six scheduled. So I haven't had any like bad experiences. Um, no, I've had, sorry, go ahead. No shitty toilets. No, uh, no, like no, no done dishes. Like, no, uh, like I, I had a family stay here for 15 days. Uh, it was a family like just moved here from Columbia because the mom was going to college at Fanshawe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might know him. Yeah, okay. From no, I don't. And, <laughs> but, no, no, I don't. Well, no, no, let me get into it, you know. And it, it, it wasn't by any means a bad experience. It was just like a like a heartwarming experience because I uh, the mom messaged me the one day and she was like, hey, we broke uh, like the railing for the curtains in the one bedroom. Um and she messaged me like Saturday at 10 p.m. So I said, okay, no problem. I'll be there Sunday morning and I'll fix it. So I, I come here like Sunday morning at like 8 in the morning. And uh, I'm in the bedroom trying to like fix the railing for them. You got or, or, tool, sorry, tool the, kit? Uh, like the curtain rod, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I bring a drill, you know, some drill bits, some screws, whatever. And uh, so I'm in the bedroom trying to fix the curtain rod for them just so they can have some privacy at night. And, and then they have two little kids running around. And as I'm like trying to fix the curtain rod, she says like, oh, hey, um, cause I think their checkout day was September 7th. And then she goes, so like after September 7th, like, is it possible we can stay here a bit longer? Because, so their whole thing was they're moving here from Columbia so she can go to college. And they stayed at my place for 15 days because that's the longest I allowed them to book it until they found like permanent rental in the city. And I was like, no, like, sorry. Like I have a couple bookings after. Oh, right after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, so for me it was tough because not that they were in a bad position. Like I'm sure they were, they're well off and I'm sure they're, you know, able to take care of themselves. But the way I looked at it was, fuck, here's a family with two little kids. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just told her after September 7th, basically, in my mind in my mind i was saying after september 7th you're homeless right so i said but uh i said i don't know anyone with like rental properties but i said let me see what i can do for you yeah so my actually my real estate mortgage guy sebastian who you dealt with i said here's his number i said give him a call really i i even texted you and i said I just thought maybe like I remember the odd you chance. asked me if I knew like anybody yeah. who was renting. I, I just time. thought maybe like you had a relative with a rental property. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I reached out to a couple people on Instagram saying, "Hey, like, do you have a rental property, etc., uh, etc." Et you know, yeah. are we all good over there or what? <laughs> so, fucking background. So you know, long story short, it's not a bad experience, but. It just it just made me feel bad because there was a family with kids, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you kind of so like I, I I did everything I could to help them, and I messaged her the next few days with multiple numbers, saying call this person, call this person, you know, do this, do that. So. Yeah. Okay. Question. Yeah. Question. So. This when you're alive, or it's just just not, use a microwave. I'm not gonna lie, it sounds like there's a bunch of rats in the background scratching shit. Question, because oh, because so all right. Okay. No, question use for real. Here's a microwave. Box, because a lot of our, a lot of the audience here is from London, and I know that when you book an Airbnb place, you gotta sort of tell the host what your plans are. What is what does somebody book, or what is what have people told you when they're booking in London, here? Yeah. What are they coming to do here? Uh, so that that's. So if you turn off uh, instant booking, 
You yeah. actually have to message a person and say why you're coming to that place. Okay. Right. So for example, my place, I turned off instant booking. So you can't just book my place. Right, I have so to, they got to tell you. So I, I have to approve it. Mm-hmm. Um, so people will just message me. Um, like I had somebody message me for, you know, next weekend or next week, I think a Thursday. Mm-hmm. She's like, hey, I'm coming from London. Uh, just come down for a business trip. Right. Right. And then I have the option to approve Isn't it. Is it mostly or, business trips or like mostly? Uh, to be honest, like that that's the first uh, request I've had for a business trip. Okay. Um, Toretto. You know, that's Toretto out there. <laughs> Yeah. Sure, man. Uh, you know, th- th- then there's people there. There's people that literally just say, uh, you know, me and a friend, me and a couple of friends are coming down for a concert or mm. to be fair, like I'm not the most knowledgeable uh, on this question just because I've only had, you know, so many bookings. Right. But um, I've had it before where I, I was going out of town and I booked an Airbnb. Right. And I would just say, you know, me and so and so are coming to town, you know. You say whatever to go see this or go see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the the whole reason, the whole reason I uh, turned off instant booking is because like this is my first property. So mm-hmm. I'm, although like my family lives in London, and I can always go home. This is like my house too, right? So yeah. I kind of I want to enjoy the place a bit too. Um, so I don't want just people coming and going no, as often as possible, right? I'm sure once w- once I get to the point where. I have a couple properties or even uh, renovate the downstairs, then I won't even right. care. Right. Right. The, the whole purpose of one of the two floors will be strictly Airbnb and cash flow. True. Right. right. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was wondering because, you know, here in London, we always say that there's nothing to do. So I thought, you uh, know, people that book an Airbnb is like, thing. what are you doing here in London? <laughs> yeah. Why I'm, are you coming down to London for? I'm not, I'm not plugging my Airbnb. But I'm plugging my Airbnb. Right. So <laughs> right. here we're in the uh, Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, Tell me Bruce. about it. Tell me about your Airbnb. <laughs> the why? Why so, should you book here? Man, so, Bruce District. I, here's here's the thing. Thing. I know, was in I know a fan, fan nah, shops man. around here. We're real close to downtown. Nah, no, breweries. Hey, hey, Kellogg's hey, factory. Time out, time out. Tell them about the breweries. Ig- Tell them about the breweries. Fanshaw. Ignore downtown. Funshaw. Not walk, Fanshaw. Funshaw. Walk 500 meters south of here. Yeah, Powerhouse Brewery. Walk 350 meters north of here. You're at Anderson's Craft. Yeah. Whatever. I don't Hard. even fucking know. One of the best. Yeah. One of the best. One of the best. And then, I don't know, somewhere over there is uh, <laughs> London Brewing Company. Hard. Yeah. That's why I call this Airbnb the Beer Muta Triangle. Beer Muta. Because okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, you get lost. So if you want to get lit, you come here. You was, that, was that a you strategy play? Was that something that, that, like, when you so, bought this property, were you like, it's the middle of everything? Or? No. When I bought this property, it was strictly lucky and strictly desperation and strictly... I need a property and right. I need a piece of real estate to my name. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then what happened? Like, 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 it was a headache. Like you know about the process. That was a fucking crazy. Yeah. Can we, we get that story on? Is this can we, sh- can well, we get that story on the podcast, bro? We, the motorcycle. We, uh, yeah. Like. Uh, I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, no, no, I mean, we, we, we can definitely get into it. Like maybe, I don't know if we want to get into it now. Breeze, breeze over, over. breeze over. Yeah. Just like, we don't have to. Like, no, no, sugar no, no, no. We, it yeah, it, 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 it's not that oh. it was a, it's not that it was a stressful day. It was a stressful, like four or five months. Right. So yes. we'll, we'll get into it at some point. Like if I get into it now, it'll take us another four hours <laughs> and it'll bring the whole injury down. But it, it, it literally got to the point where I thought, fuck, I'm not going to get this house and I'm going to get sued because I'm breaching my like agreement, uh, my purchase sale and whatever. Yeah. So, so when I, when I got the keys at that point, I was like, fuck, I didn't even think about Airbnb. I was like, okay, let me go one day at a time. And then once I settled in, got some, you know, furniture, uh, then I looked into Airbnb. I did my research. I went on Airbnb and pretended like I was going to rent a house in London, just seeing what like uh, some of the competition was like. Yeah. And I literally went on my laptop, searched up local Airbnbs, and then on my phone, uh, created my ad. Right. So I would take word, not wording, but take ideas, certain like titles, descriptions, ideas, what they mentioned about their property, and then mention that 
relevant detail about my property. Yeah. Beautiful garden. Look, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So mimic, you just mimic yeah. exactly. Uh, mentioned, like, mentioned my sunroom with the beautiful yeah. sunset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you garden, know. you garden yeah. every weekend. You also see his backyard. It's yeah. beautiful. It's backyard. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm in the patio. Patio's fire too. Oh yeah. Yeah. I who, mean, who 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 did the patio? Uh, so, uh, here's the thing. So plug. I, I plug. put in, I'm not trying to plug in. No, plug, <laughs> plug it in. No, no. Plug, plug it, it in. Plug it in. I'm listen, not, we don't have no advertisements yet. I'm not Remember, here. they're paid. Listen, listen. <laughs> but you can plug in yourself yeah. in. No, no, I'm not here to plug anyone, but I'm here to plug myself. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we hired a con, uh, company, Debonke Construction Incorporated, which is actually my company uh, oh you hired oh, them. oh yeah so some of, the, some of the best bricklayers in london right? yeah so we uh. we specialize in like brick stone block masonry and brick and stone driveway patio repairs so i i put in a patio on the back i think it's 11 by 16 foot stone patio um i don't know where wow. we're going with that but no, yeah. I'm it, but it's, it's beautiful it's, like, it's a vibe even, yeah it's a vibe it's <laughs> a vibe you know i put the patio on the back some solar lights surrounding it yeah. and a that probably brings pit. the property like more in value like when, like, like in, in terms of refinancing i don't know how much value that would bring specifically but in terms of airbnb and uh like i've learned so far with airbnb the main thing is just like having people leave a positive review right it's all about the experience so like you look at my house hardwoods outdated you know kitchen counters outdated washrooms outdated those are all projects i'm leaving for next year so people might come here and say oh fuck like this house isn't the prettiest but do they have a good time here yeah, do they have exactly. a couple of drinks on the patio do they light a fire make some Fox. s'mores you yeah, know what Fox. i mean so did, the amenities did, right? yeah did i did i tell them hey if you need anything reach out did i leave some some recommendations so you're in yeah. the customer service business yeah. exactly yeah. you know especially because i don't have like i'm not i'm not providing the best quality because there's there's no no like there there there's like uh real estate investors who have multiple properties and they have you know hundreds of thousand dollars in the bank where they can afford to you make know, their airbnb repair, like exactly yeah, yeah. yeah make exactly. it look spectacular yeah. Right, the, like yeah. keep in mind, this is my first property, yeah. right? So at some point, I'll make this a great property, but I, you know, I just moved in months ago, right? So, fact. so like, until I get there, I yeah. can speak Facts. to that on the other end. I was just in an Airbnb last weekend, and it wasn't the greatest Airbnb. It wasn't the fucking nicest, but the fact that the lady had like pamphlets everywhere about like things to do, and the fact that she cares so much about her host made that airbnb better than getting like a fucking mansion with the pool straight, straight up yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. like i could straight care less about, yeah. i mean and obviously that's nice but like yeah. the fact that she took the time to like have pamphlets have like yeah. have a whole little itinerary of like yeah. if you want to do this this is what you have to do she had she had what she had chips yeah. for us yo. So she had a little she had a little goodie you. bag oh, yeah, yeah. of so, like shit for us like yo that's that's hard yeah oh, one so, thing I'm, oh, go I, was, I was gonna say thank you laura for bringing that up because um because what I did was like, I was like, fuck, like, what, what can I do to make at make least the first yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, me and my sister made a Costco run, like, probably the week before I listed on Airbnb. Yeah. I bought, like, a box of, you know, those personal size trip bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I, I'm a slut for pecan bags. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be honest. So, what do you do for it? What would you do yeah, for it? Anything, for it? anything, well, anything, yo. Talk to me. Talk to you. run it. Talk to me, dirty. <laughs> yeah. I would do for a pecan butter tart. I would do anything. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so butter I'm at Costco, bet. and yeah, the best. So I'm at I'm at uh, Costco, and they have like a box of twelve pecan butter tarts yeah. for like six ninety nine. You so he bought two. He left six. He so, left six. Like, so, so not only did I say he left two. No, no, no not not only dealt with the rest. Not only did I say I don't even need to slut out for these. <laughs> I said these are cheap as fuck. So I bought a box or two or three of those. Yeah, you did. Some yeah, you chips. Did. Yeah, you did. And and then I bought like a little uh, like a storage bin or whatever, like a little so basket, a little them. basket. Yeah, and I left it on the dining room table. So each guest that would check in, I would leave like two butter tarts right. oh, and, yeah, yeah. you know, a few bags of chips yeah. and then the, uh, like a welcome book yeah. saying, here's the Wi-Fi, whatever. So, so 
So oh. it's. Uh, oh, I was just gonna finish. Yeah. Bro, so I no. <laughs> so no, let, me, let me get in. There. It, it, it's funny that no, no. It, it, it's like crazy that Sergio mentions like staying let out of Airbnb it. with, say his whole with the bag of chips because like I did the same thing, you know. Yeah. Talk to us, Jordan. Talk to no, us. No, I just want to ask. Let it out. Let it out. I, mean this, I just want to ask. Is like customer service is it not the best way to get business? No, it is. That's how you retain <laughs> customers. That's how you retain. I love people. how you just jump in, really. Yeah. No. I, <laughs> Okay, yo, how long have we been running for it? I two swear we've been at least an hour. Long. How hungry. long have you been? They're already eating. They're already eating. Almost two hours? Whatever. Oh, like a good hour and a half. Hour and a half. Hey, just wrap it up. This is good. Yeah, We're going to be at like an hour and a half, right? Like it was an hour. This has been a big episode. Do you guys want to? Do you guys want to wrap it up with like a little Jordan, Jordan, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrap it up with a fun question. Wrap it up with a fun question. Well, I don't know, but I don't have a fun question. But oh, I got a question. I have a good one, though. I thought maybe you guys... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coke has a good one. Let's wrap well, it up with this good last question. question. Good question. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. right. So listen, for everyone who had a first-time experience, what would you share on going on live to everyone? Like first-time experience on live? Yeah. Um, well, literally. That, that was probably my first time going live, but... I don't know. I didn't even think about it. Didn't even look at <laughs> yeah. it. Like, I, I forgot. I, I think we're live for, like, such a small amount of time that we probably didn't even pay attention to it. Fair but, like... Yeah. We're just being on what's, camera, too, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I've been around the camera. And that was a back. fucking great way to wrap it up yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yo, yo <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, everyone. Yo. Shout out Jordan for the good question. If, that was yeah, yeah. fucking... Yeah. And if, no, out of... All his good questions. Can we say that was the worst good question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, listen, I'm not gonna lie. Can I? Go ahead, Bobby. I was just going to say, listen, your host will be back with better stuff. <laughs> we, got, we got the crew. The yeah. crew sucks. <laughs> you know, we're out of here. But, yo, no. make sure you like, subscribe, you comment. And honestly, at the end of the day, thank you oh. for, for everyone who supported the marathon. That was actually huge. I want to give a special shout out to Sergio, Laura, um, David Davies, Jeff Espinoza, Brian Espinoza. Those guys literally were like in it, like in it, like go, puppy, go, go, go. Like without without the whole community, like like we're not doing this. So like, yeah. thank you to everyone supporting New Vida, New Vida. Let's talk and like that's a fucking wrap. Let's go. Yes, Done. Bop, bop. Easy. Yep.